Hey y'all, it's Kayla J here. So the Lord recently allowed me to do a study on Ruth. And I've always read Ruth here and there, you know, um, find your Boaz, don't find your broke ass, your beating your ass. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever heard that. It was funny. Anyways, um, everybody's always encouraging you to find Boaz, find Boaz, and not the other ass is. And, um, and that's kind of how I got hit to Ruth. But other than that, I was like, oh, that's a nice story. Okay. Um, and then recently I discovered a verse. It was really, really profound. Um, I think it's Ruth one something. Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me and be so ever severely if even death separates you and me. And I just thought that was such a profound verse. Now in context, she's talking about her mother-in-law, but I saw it at a wedding and I just thought like, wow, that was really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I was reading Ruth today and boy, God gave me so much revelation that I want to share with y'all. So I'm hoping that, um, I'm going to put some verses on the screen, but not really. I really hope that you go back and read Ruth yourself. Um, just because it really is so profound in context. And, um, and there's even a commentary that I use that might be helpful. I'll try to remember to link that as well. So, uh, starting in Ruth 1, 1, um, I always, uh, prayed. I said, God, like, after I realized the context of the verse, like how deeply she cared for her mother-in-law, I always prayed, like, God allowed me to have a relationship like that with my mother-in-law. Like, where you go, I'll go. Your people will be my people. Um, yeah, just so profound. But then reading the verse today, I realized, like, yes, I do want that relationship. But if you think about it, like, they they had to go through some things to get that deep relationship. For someone to say, where you go, I'll go, like, be God deal with me ever so severely if even death separates us. They'd have to go through some things, and they did. Ruth lost her husband. And then her sons took on wives, Naomi and Ophrah. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, and then 10 years later, the husbands died. Their two husbands died. And so she then she lost her sons. And so they were grieving together. And so obviously grief can definitely bring people closer together because they're all each other have now, the three women. And so, yeah, that God just gave me new perspective on like that it is a beautiful relationship, but it took a lot for them to get there. Like they had to go through a lot. And even like we see like people's platforms and we see um, people's relationships. You don't know what they went through to have that deep, profound relationship that they have. And so just always important to, before you covet something or not even just before you desire something, understand that it's a process to get there. Um, uh, my pastor was saying something the other day in the sermon, she was like, you know, I guess a lot of people uh, asked her, like, I want the same grace you have. And she was just like, and so you're going to go through the every bit of hell that I went through to get this same grace. And it's like, man, when you put that in perspective, is that what you want? You know, um, just like people I see, like, I envy them or excuse me, I admire them, but I don't envy them at all. I truly admire what they're doing, but I, I could never envy them because I cannot imagine the hell that they've gone through. I can't imagine the trials they've gone through. So anyways, digressing, same chapter in Ruth 1, uh, we see that Naomi was bitter within reason. Who wouldn't be bitter? Just lost your husband 10 years prior, now your sons. And even later in the verse, we see that Naomi was saying like, May, I want you girls to leave me to go back to your homeland so you can find rest. Another word for rest in Hebrew is security. And so she's just lost her security. So probably feeling like, how can I rest? I, she It says she sold the land. So maybe they were living on that for a little bit. But she knew that I don't have any security. I'm an old woman. She was telling her daughter-in-laws, like, I can't have another son for you. And what? I get married tomorrow. You're going to wait around for this baby to grow up to be your husband. And so um, 
I could definitely understand the bitterness, but it was also important for Ruth not to take that on. And so even people who we are close with, um, not allowing that root of bitterness to grow on us or to get on us. Uh, Ruth 1.22, Naomi and Ruth got to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So before I get to that, um, in the scripture, Naomi was just like, no, like you have to go. And oh, <laughs> the other sister-in-law was like, bye, you right. Let me dry out my tears and go. And it's not that she didn't care the same, but it's just like, when Naomi kind of spilled out her the life and like what you're going to wait for this baby to grow up, she was just like, no, nah, I can't do that. Um, and some people aren't, some people are for a season and that's okay. I'm sure it was no love lost. Uh, but Ruth was like, no, I can't. And it says uh, when she saw, so th this is Naomi, when she saw Ruth 118, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. And I imagine like she stopped speaking. And she was like, okay, this girl is not leaving me. Let me devise a plan. Let me think of something. And then it goes on to say, now the two of them went to Bethlehem. And God's timing is so divine. Um, well, first of all, let me just say this, that the fact that Naomi looked, even looked to God um, and to go back to this homeland. And so it's just beautiful how Naomi thought to go back to her homeland. Um, and it says that, Naomi and Ruth uh, went to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. And so looking up what the barley harvest is, this is um, an intricate time for farmers where they need extra hands. And just the thinking about the timing of God, Naomi, I don't know if Naomi had the plan of everything that went down or maybe it was as she went, but Naomi God allowed them to go at the perfect time because it was easy for Ruth to get work because they needed extra hands in the field for the harvest. And so God's timing is impeccable. Um, and so getting a job was easy for Ruth and she wanted to work. Ruth came with a humble, submitted heart that wanted to work. Um, like in Ruth 2, 2, we see like she wasn't lazy. As soon as she got there, she asked her mother-in-law, can I go to the field? So Boaz was known as the kinsman's redeemer. So the kinsman's redeemer means that he is the one in the entire family where if land is stolen, he redeems it. If money, if um, like I think they, after 50 years in a land, it would, after 50 years, it'd have to be sold back to the original owners. Like he would claim that. He would claim property after, upon death. Um, if somebody was murdered, he would like have to avenge them and just different things like that. And then um, also the job of the kinsman's redeemer is to marry a widow, a childless widow. So if in the family, so Imelec, Naomi's husband died. And because Ruth didn't have any children with her son, she was eligible to marry the kinsman's redeemer, which was Boaz. And so I believe Naomi knew this going in, like, I got to get us some security. Ruth is childless, so she's eligible to marry Boaz. And so I think it's cool to see the strategy of Naomi and the strategy God gave to Naomi to secure this. Also, not to mention just the strategy, but also, like I said, the willingness of Ruth because and the humility Ruth and Naomi had because they could have went in there to right up to Boaz and say, hey, husband died. This is the widow. You're the kinsman's redeemer. Um, another word is goal. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but goal. Uh, but you're the kinsman's redeemer. You need to marry her. But they didn't. They went the humble route. Like in two, two, excuse me, in two, five through six, we see that Boaz found Ruth working in the field and then he inquired about her. So it's also amazing to see that her character preceded her. Um, let me find the verse. In Ruth 2, 5, it says, Then Boaz said to his servants, Who is in charge of the reapers? Whose young woman is this? So the servants who was in charge of the reaper answered and said, It is a young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And, and she said, Please let me glean and gather the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued to work morning until now, though she's rested a little bit in the house. 
man, like, imagine if Ruth would have got there. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. She got there to work. And so when it was a report, because, you know, when you're new, everybody has something to say about who you are. And so when the report came out, uh, it was like, no, she's been working. And I don't know, whoever was trifling saying she was resting in the house a little bit. I feel like that was a hater. Um, but, you know, she's been working from morning until now. And so that's how Boaz noticed her. Um, and then in Boaz 8 on, I'm going to read it. It says, then Bo, and this is the New King James Version. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not glean in any other field nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field watch they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said, said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. And now you have left your father and mother in the land of your birth and have come to the people whom you did not know before. The Lord will repay your work in full reward and, and a full reward will be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for res refuge. And she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me. And you have spoken kindly of your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Now Boaz said to her, okay, let me pause there. Literally, she asked if she could find favor in his sight. And we'll read later on that she, like, did, found so much favor. Um, man, even to the point where, and this is someone who's new, where Boaz took notice of her and he even invited her to dinner with the rest of them. Um, it says, now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat. Okay, wait, before I say this part, going back up, I believe Boaz was so taken with her because of the literal uh, description of his job as a kinsman's redeemer. I believe he had a heart for, I feel like you have to have a heart for uh, the hi historic value of the family and to redeem, just like Jesus, like a heart to redeem. And so I believe hearing her story, the fact that maybe they heard that the other sister-in-law left while Ruth said, I'm not leaving you. And and because his heart went out to Naomi, who just lost Imelec and her sons, um, I believe his heart was softened even more by Ruth because it was like, she's literally a woman after my own heart. She cares for who would some would consider the forgotten as a widow of um, Naomi. And so, yeah, I just believe that immediately Boaz was captivated. Like you could have left her like the other one, but you didn't and you stayed. And so that's why I just saying, I pray God gives you a full reward. Oh, so amazing. Okay. Um, so Ruth 14 and 15, I think I'm gonna read. Now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, this is 15, when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not repro reproach her. 16 says, also let grain from her bundles fall purposely for her, leave it so that may she may glean and do not rebuke her. So I translated this in like a, I think the message version, basically it says, let me just read it actually. <laughs> basically it says, um, give her like more grain, drop more grain so she can pick it up. It says, um, let her glean where there's still plenty of grain on the ground. Make it easy for her. Better yet, pull some of the good stuff out and leave it for her to glean. Give her special treatment. Already the favor that Ruth has asked for in front of Boaz, like she was already getting it. And I even imagine like her getting up from the table is just like, she's still, and I don't know, but like Boaz know her coming, like he knew her authority. She technically had the authority, like I said to, hey, this is my right. This is Naomi, like I'm the widowless child, I'm the childless widow. This is my right. 
I shouldn't have to work. I should just inherit this you in marriage. But even just her getting up and saying, like, I'm going to go back to work. I'm sure Boaz was like, wow, just falling in love every day. Um, and yeah, so Boaz purposely allowed, like, her to have more to harvest. Um, and this was favor that was coming to Ruth because what you sow, you reap. Like Naomi in chapter one and throughout just kept saying like, I got to find it. Naomi kept wishing this blessing on Ruth. She kept saying, the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with me, excuse me, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. So basically just saying like Ruth was an amazing wife and she was an amazing daughter-in-law. So that favor was really coming to Ruth. And like I said, just her character preceded her everywhere she went um Naomi and Ruth had a strategy to secure Ruth to secure Ruth's redemption and the title of this in the New King James Version is called Ruth's Redemption Assured in uh, chapter excuse me verse one in chapter three it says then Naomi said to her mother-in-law excuse me then Naomi her mother-in-law said to her my daughter shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you. So basically rest, security. Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relative? I feel like she already knew this answer. Actually she did, because we heard in chapter one where she said like Elimelech's um, relative. But <laughs> I feel like she was like, I guess hipping Ruth to this strategy, this not even game, but this is what they did back then. Um, just to get Ruth thinking like, yeah, this is your authority. You can do it. Um, so it says, is he not our relative? In fact, he's winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Uh, therefore, wash yourself, anoint yourself, put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall no notice the place where he lies and you shall go and uncover his feet and lie down. And he will tell you what you should do. And she said to her, all that, and she said, this is Ruth. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. Just like the divine wisdom of, of Naomi, the divine strategy of wait till he's finished. And, and so what's happening here is like she's sitting at his feet in like a submissive, submissive position, showing him like, I'm here. I'd like for you to take me as your wife. And so Ruth, she deserved this. She had been doing backbreaking stuff. She she needed a soft life. Already grieving her past husband, her father-in-law, Ruth needed a soft life. And I'm happy for Ruth. Anyways, let's keep reading. Also, you can check out um, information about the Kinsman's Redeemer in uh, Deuteronomy 5, 25, excuse me, 5 through 10. Okay, Ruth 3, 7, it says, After Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was cheerful. He went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. It says, now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned to himself. And there a woman was lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? She answered, I am Ruth, your maidservant. First of all, I just like to say the fact that he was startled. I just kind of feel like that man, he didn't have him running through. Like he was a wholesome man. He really did not expect nobody to be at his feet. <laughs> and I love it. Anyways, um, he said, who are you? So she said, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. Basically saying like, you are the kinsman's redeemer. This is actually um, my inheritance that I'm a childless widow. You're the next in line to marry me. And then he said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, in that you do not go after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request, for all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Oh, just amazing. Basically, Ruth was bold and presented herself like, you going to marry me or not? I'm waiting at his feet. And... Even in that, when he woke up, he was just 
we even see Boaz's character because maybe another man would have just been like, come on, let's sleep together. But Boaz was like, took that time to, to exhort her and say like, everyone knows in this town knows you a virtuous woman. Everyone knows who you are. And Boaz also took notice of her character saying like, you could have had your pick of these young men. So theologians say that um, Boaz was probably considerably older while Ruth wasn't. Um, but Boaz was saying, you could have had your pick of men. Instead, you kept to yourself. Basically, Ruth wasn't fast. And he said, you kept to yourself. Um, and that also shows like the that she was under the tutelage and under the uh, wisdom of a strong woman, Naomi. Because she could have been out here, but she was really a good person, a good girl. And so that word virtuous, uh, just meaning good quality, moral strength, wealth, might, fear, uh, a force. And so it just shows that both of them were of such great character. Um, jumping down to, oh, well, no, 312. This also shows Boaz's character because he says, now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a closer relative than I. Stay this night and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of close relative for you, good, let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. Lie down until morning. Ah, uh, basically, he could have taken advantage of her, but he didn't. One, two, it's like so close yet so far. So this is probably very anxiety stricken for Ruth because and even Naomi probably didn't know this. Like, I thought it was Boaz because they probably would have been barking up the other tree if they didn't, you know, if they knew. So I'm sure they didn't know that there was a closer relative. I'm going to continue to read. It says, this is 314. So she lay at his feet until morning and she rose before one could recognize her, recognize another. So it was very dark still. Then he said to her, do not let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. I feel like this was just very wise of him because one, we don't want all the people talking in the town, but two, um, I feel like, and we'll see later on, I think in verse four, chapter four, how Boaz presents it to the other man. I feel like, you know how if somebody knows that you want something desperately, just a terrible, kind, not kind-hearted person, then they'll like go and seek that thing too. I feel like Boaz just needed to know like, I ain't tripping on her. I'm good. But really deep down, he was like, I really want this. I and have fallen in love with her. She would be a great wife, but I can't have the townspeople talking, not to mention don't want to fall into scandal because not obeying the law of letting the closer relative have it first, have first dibs at the land as well as Ruth who came with the land. Um, it says also, he said, bring that, bring the shawl that is on you and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six, if fast, I don't really know how to say that, but basically it, um, another word for that, it translates to bushels. And we know like a bushel is a lot. And basically they said, realistically, six of them, she shouldn't have been able to carry that home. Um, and he measured it and he laid it on her and then she went into the city. So not only did this man promise to marry her if the other relative said no, but he sent her away with something like just how amazing and noble of Boaz, like, I don't know. I guess I'm falling in love with Boaz. Shoot. <laughs> Anyways, how amazing of him to just um, send her away with a gift. It just showed that he really cared for her and that she did have a place in his heart because I'm sure maybe the handmaidens just throwing themselves at him because he was a wealthy man. And, and the fact that he she caught his attention by working and in her purpose. I'll get to that after, but the fact that she caught his attention like that, I'm sure he was like, wow, this she's one of one. So in Ruth chapter four, basically Boaz is going up to the gate. So this is where I guess they did all their business, the town's gate. And he brought um, people with him that could basically witness and testify like the deal that was going to go down between Boaz and the other relative. And so Boaz was like, hey, come sit down. I have some business to talk to you about. And... He said, 
Then he said to this close relative, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, sold the piece of land which belonged to our brother Imelech. And I thought to inform you, saying, buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants and the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is no one else but you to redeem it, and I am next after you. So th this very respect. And he said, the relative said, I will redeem it. I can just imagine. So theologians say that Ruth and Naomi might probably have been there in the vicinity. Um, and of course, Boaz and all the other witnesses, probably a busy gate area. Um, my heart just sank. Like, oh my God, he wants to redeem it. So that means I have to be his wife. This was not the plan, Naomi. <laughs> um, and then four or five says, then Boaz said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, Boaz was probably real cool about it too. This was more than likely strategy too. Um, cause he knew, but wait, there's more. Um, you know how you set something up for somebody? He said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you must also buy it from Ruth, the Moabites, the wife of the dead to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance. And the close relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest you ruin my own inheritance. You redeem my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. And so he was adamant, I can't do it. And so some theologians say that. Um, he probably had a lot of sons already, and he couldn't split their inheritance up and afford uh, for Ruth to come and have to further divide their inheritance with the kids that he, Ruth and him have. Also, um, they said, you know, his wife probably wouldn't have liked that. So, huh, success. I'm sure Ruth and Emily were like, yes, this is what we wanted. Okay. So then it says in Ruth, Ruth 4, 7, Now it was custom in the former times of Israel concerning the redeeming and exchanging uh, to confirm everything that one man took off his sandal and gave it to another. And this was confirmation. So like I said, you can read about that in Deuteronomy 2, 25, 5 through 10. Boaz was like rejoicing in his mind, but he probably had to play it cool. Like, mm, I ain't tripping, but you know, he was probably so excited. Um, okay. And then Ruth 4, I think I'm more excited. <laughs> In Ruth 4, 11, it says, um, and the people at the gate, because like I said, Ruth's character preceded her. It says, and the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make the woman who is coming to your house, y'all listen to this, like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the house of Israel and may you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. They were famous, all right. And I'll explain that a little bit later but y'all the fact that they would pray and bestow the same blessing of rachel and leah the wives of jacob who had the 12 tribes of israel on ruth like god is a redeemer no matter what has happened god is a redeemer to the faithful god is a redeemer to the oh he's just a redeemer i mean it's just a huge blessing that they would pray and bestow upon Ruth and for them to say like, for you to all be famous in Bethlehem. Oh my gosh. And so it's interesting that they said that because in their lineage, they were. So the son that Ruth and Boaz would go on to have, um, Obed, he was the father of Jesse. Jesse, we know, was the father of David. And out of David's lineage came Jesus through, of course, Joseph. And they were famous. Like Jesus is great, 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 great. However many greats was Ruth and Boaz. And so um, the Bible is just filled with so many like stories of just how... Okay, before I say that, this was... So in Ruth 14, 4, 14, it says, Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you on this day without a close relative, that may his name be famous in Israel, and he, that, and he may be the restorer of life and the nourisher of, of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Ah, oh, just how amazing, like, not only was Ruth redeemed, but Naomi was redeemed. Someone said, like 
your daughter-in-law has been better to you than seven sons could have ever been. Basically, then seven times the security, then seven times the rest. Your daughter-in-law has been better to you than that. And, and not to mention like, I guess to die without a relative was a disgrace. And so the fact that she was able to nurse her grandson, Obed, and some people might say like, well, technically it wasn't her. Mm -mm. The Bible is full of stories like Joseph was Jesus's father and Joseph was the connection in the lineage of from King David. And so like, there are so many stories where maybe, maybe people weren't connected by blood, but they were connected by covenant. And that's so much more powerful and has so much more weight. And so just the fact that God would redeem Naomi and give her a grandson that would be famous of all in all of Bethlehem. And we, and we would know that like his great, 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 great would be Jesus, the redeemer. And so also, um, some theologians pointed out how it's just so beautiful that if you think about it, Jesus came out of a lineage of a kinsman's redeemer, like, and Jesus was our kinsman's redeemer. The redeemer, literally, Jesus was our redeemer. We were sin, in sin, and Jesus came to redeem us. And so think it not strange how God is so strategic in the lineage that Jesus would come out of. And this is why we, of course, know that um, they had to like go back to Bethlehem to register in the census because Jesus's lineage was through Joseph was um, from Bethlehem, starting with Boaz and Ruth. Ah, oh, this is just such a beautiful story. But the takeaway, a couple of takeaways is like, we have to be ready. If we're ready, we don't have to get ready. And I say that to say like, ready to work. What are you doing in your season of singleness? Ruth was newly single and she still had the thought of, I need to go and work in my purpose. And so in your purpose is where you will be found. God will never send company. God will only send help. Are you help? Are you, do you need help? Like Boaz was able to help Ruth. If she would have been sitting in the hut with Naomi, how could he help her there? How could he even notice her there? Um, and so... And then even Ruth proving herself to be helpful to Boaz, not only her character as a virtuous woman, literally to be favor on, to add favor into Boaz's house, um, but help as in, she know how to work the field. So let one of the male servants act up, even though like after they get married and Ruth is like, no, I'm, I'm good. Like, oh, baby girl know how to work the field. Like, <laughs> I can trust, like Boaz can trust her to go and handle business because she's a worker bee. And that's just all it is. So I say that to say like, in the season of singleness, we need to be working because in our purpose is where we are found. Um, and maybe you could be delaying your marriage season by not being in your purpose, by not working. I don't know, ask God, what's the last thing God told you to do? I found that um, when I was disobedient and I wasn't doing that, like I'll even give my example. Um, and I have another video, but I have a book coming out. Um, but when the whole 2022, I kept asking God, God, where's my man? Where is he? And God was like, what's the last thing I told you to do? June, where's my man? What's the last thing I told you to do? Um, finally in October, I got myself together. I said, God, where is my man? <laughs> he said, what's the last thing I told you to do? I said, okay, so you're serious. You want me to finish this book? And I finished the book and that's for another video, another time. But God is faithful. He, like, if he asks you to do something, that's what he means. What's the last thing I told you to do? And then everything is yours. So yeah, um, I love you guys. I pray the Lord blesses you. I pray the Lord keeps you. May his face shine upon you. 
May he be gracious to you. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to know any other revelation y'all have on this story. It just really blessed me. Yeah.